this. If you've got your Bibles, turn into Colossians this evening, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to help you and teach you some things tonight that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Maybe you need a refreshing of it. This is Paul's greetings to the Colossians. Let's start with the fifth of the sixth verse. Colossians chapter two, verse six. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy in vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in Him dwell all fullness of the Godhead body, bodily. And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he show he made show of them openly, triumphantly over them and it. Sadly, today salvation by faith in Christ sounds too easy for many people. Many people think that's too easy. They would rather think that they have done something to save themselves. Their religion becomes one of self-effort that leads either to disappointment or pride, but finally to eternal death. Christ's simple way is the only way. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to get to the Father but through Jesus Christ. He is the simple way and the only way. And it alone leads to eternal life. Amen? Again, to this evening, I want to talk about a new life in Christ. If you are a born-again believer here tonight, you have a new life in Christ. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we ask you one more time. Dear Lord, I ask you to anoint these lips of clay. Yes, Lord. Anoint me, dear Lord, thy servant, to bring forth your word as you have given it to me. And Lord, I ask you, dear Lord, to open up every ear, and even those on YouTube and, and the internet when this goes out, dear God, that they will understand what you have for us. The letter that was written and was given to the Colossians by the Apostle Paul, Lord, we ask you tonight to help us and let, Lord, that we receive it and we give you all praise. We give you all glory tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. And amen. amen. The question I would like to ask is how did they, meaning the Colossians, receive the Lord Jesus Christ? The Colossians received the Lord in the same manner that every person who has ever been saved has received the Lord. Amen? For there is has been only one way of salvation. To receive this perfect plan of salvation, which God has provided as such price 
All one has to do is simply believe. Believe. As simple as that is, just believe. The Christian who loves the Lord, which characterizes all true Christians, who is at the same time failing in, same, in some way, and untold millions are failing, is just as much a Christian in the eyes of God as the one who is walking victoriously. Let me help you. The Lord doesn't have five kinds or even two kinds of Christians. He only has one. Amen? Church, you're not perfect. And neither am I. I will fail and I will make mistakes. But thank God, thank God, He's only got one way. He's only got one type of Christian. And that is somebody who will believe. Amen? Amen? Every single believer on the face of the earth and for all time is in Christ. That position does not change because it is in Christ that I'm in. That means that whatever the believer does or doesn't do, his position cannot change. At least as long as he or she continues to trust Christ. Come on. God ain't up there shifting you around. And when you make a mistake, he goes, you're out. Come on. My position in Christ stays the same. That does. But I can change that. I can walk away from God. I can fail and, and, and turn my back on God and lose that position. Every born again believer is placed in Christ. And that position doesn't change unless you backslide from God. Come on. Come on. Let me help you. However, even though his or her position in Christ is unchangeable, what he or she does or doesn't do regarding the sanctification process is the most single important thing there is. It decides whether he or she will walk victoriously or the opposite. The truth is, most Christians today aren't walking victoriously. But the very opposite. Listen to me. If Satan can get you to place your faith in something other than the cross of Christ, he will make life miserable for you. Come on. And in fact, could get you to completely give up and quit even as he has with many. Yes. Come on. The church should be full. Yes. Amen. 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 But they have allowed, they have not walked a victorious life because they have not allowed the sanctification process coming in our lives. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. That's why we need the Holy Ghost to continue working in our lives. Yes. Making us, your position is still the same. You are in Christ. Are you getting that? So you're there in Christ if you are a born again believer. But the process is a continuing process to help us grow and become victorious in Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's where we fail. That's where we lose out. Because we've taken our eyes. Paul says, as you have therefore received Jesus Christ, 
the Lord, so walk ye in him. He said, you're rooted and built up and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therewith, therein with thanksgiving. Rooted and built up in him pertains first of all to a proper foundation. Come on. We have got a proper foundation. Who is our foundation? Who is our rock? Jesus Christ. Amen. We have got that proper foundation. And the roots being in that foundation, which will guarantee a constant growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. If you are in Christ, your position is the same and your roots come on. It's that getting down into that foundation. Amen. And the Lord is helping you to grow. That's why when you plant, it's almost spring. I can't wait. I gotta get up here. I'm getting the answer. I want to plant a garden. I want to get those tomatoes out there. Amen. But you got to get that root down in the ground. Because if it's not down in the ground, the wind will come and the rain will come and it'll wash it up the same way spiritually. If you're not rooted in the foundation of Jesus Christ, when the devil come, when he will come, and he will come, and he's coming, yes. because he said he's going to roar, roaring like a roaring lion, he's there, church. You better have your roots grounded yes. and rooted yes. in the foundation. Huh? This story is not about the three little pigs. That the wolf came and up and pumped and moved the house down. Huh? Come on. It's talking about having your roots rooted and grounded and built up in Him. He says, and established in the faith. It refers to the body of proper Christian doctrine. Which again speaks of the finished work of who? Jesus Christ. Whenever our faith, whenever our faith is properly placed, there will always be abounding growth. Come on. You want to be closer to the Lord today than you were yesterday. You ought to be closer than you were an hour ago. Come on. Established in the faith. Refer, refers to the body of proper Christian doctrine. Again, which speaks of the finished work. And there ought to be, when your faith is properly placed, there ought to be a growth coming in you. Amen. I'm not talking about outward growth. Yeah. That's because you've been at the table too long. Or too many times it's a buffet. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> However, the blessing state of the believer will continue only as long as the faith is placed properly. Yes, Amen? Amen? Yes. All of this will continue only as long as we continue in that which we have been taught. Yes. Come on. He's an established in the faith as you have been what? Taught. Amen. I'm going to preach you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Put your faith in the finished work of Christ. This is what Paul was saying. I have taught you where to place your faith. Get yourself rooted and built up in Christ. Amen. And abounding therewith and with thanksgiving. What's he saying there? This is the fruit of a thriving life in Christ. Amen? If you're in Christ, your position stays the same. Okay? You're not shifting around. Huh? This is not checkers. This is not, come on, anything, a game we're playing. But I'm staying there in Christ. Now, Paul tells them and he tells us, he said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world 
and not after Christ. Now, Paul warns again against being taken captive through a false philosophy. What is Paul saying? See to it that it don't happen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. When you leave here, what you listen to, what you read, what you hear from other people is between you and God. But while you're here, I'm going to teach you and let you know, amen, the truth. But beware of them out there. Paul said, see to that you don't get tangled up with them. We must ever be on guard. Lest there be anyone who rob, who would rob him of his faith. Again, Satan attacks are always in the realm of opposition to our faith. Yeah. And whatever the direction, all philosophy, come on, the Bible says and Paul says, through the Holy Spirit is vain descent. Meaning, empty nothings. Deception. Come on. In other words, it is not the Word of God. It is vain and it is deception. Amen. That is what Paul said. He said, after the tradition of man refers to something that's been handed down generation after generation, but which is not of God. Amen. Because it is of men. The tradition of men. There are many religions in the world. All of men, meaning of the world. And therefore not of God. There is no salvation other than according to what Jesus did at the cross. Amen? And, the, and man's faith in that sacrifice. As well, there is no victory, no victory in one's life after they are saved unless they continue to have faith in the cross. Amen. Huh? You, all your what? Your heart got dropped at first. Because I said there is no victory in one's life after they are saved, but you didn't let me finish it. And what I mean is unless you and I continue to have faith in the cross. Come on. I've got victory coming. i got victory tonight. Amen. Because my faith is anchored in Jesus Christ. Amen. Just as salvation is impossible other than faith in the cross, victory is impossible other than faith in the cross. Amen. He said in verse 9, for he, for in him, dwelleth all fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Him refers to who? Jesus Christ. In whom dwell all the elements of deity and the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Does not mean traits of deity only, but the very nature of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, and ye are complete in Him. <laughs> which is the head of all principality and power. Yes. Being complete in Him, we find this satisfaction of every spiritual want. And as much as we are now in Christ, amen, this means that all the victory He has is our victory. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody ought to shout in this yeah. place tonight. Yeah. Amen. Everything that Jesus has, if I'm in Him, belongs to me. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. You ought to be happy tonight. Yes. Amen. You ought to be jumping. Everything. Come on. You've got a new life in Christ when you say yes to Him. Amen. Sadly, there are more Christians their noses in the ground Woe me, woe my, oh my, what are we going to do? Instead of praising God. I don't know where I'm going to get the next meal from. Well, my God 
owns all the taters on the hills. Yes. Yeah. And all the cattle on the field. Huh? Amen. I'm blessed, church. Tonight. I'm rooted. My God owns all the hamburgers I need. Yes. Are you hearing me tonight? When one has Christ, he acknowledges no other authority in the spirit world. Are you hearing that? When one has Christ, he acknowledges no other authority. They say it tonight. Don't mess with me, devil. I don't hear you no more. Huh? Christ is the head of all principality and power. He said, in whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now, I'm going to get a little deep here. All this is done in Christ and what He does in the heart and the life of the believer is brought about totally by what He did at the cross and the resurrection and our faith in that. Amen? Amen? It is not at all of man's efforts, man's ability, or man's religions, or man in any way. It is, the Bible says, without hands. Mm. The body of the sins of the flesh refer to what? The old carnal nature. Because of Christ, the power of sin, nature is broken. And no longer controls us. Shouldn't. Come on. At least if our faith is properly placed in the cross of Christ. Physical circumcision which the Lord commanded Abraham to carry out as a sign of the covenant which was extended in the Mosaic Law, was a symbol of the true circumcision which only Christ could give. The physical act concerned the cutting of the skin attached to the head of the male organ. Follow along. This separated the skin from the head of the reproductive organ which made it much easier to keep clean. As well, when this was done, there was shedding of blood. It also was painful. It served as a fixed symbol. And that's all it was, a symbol. The circumcision of Christ, spiritual circum circumcision, brought about by Christ, involves First of all, a separation from the sins of the flesh. Now are you understanding? To the, to, in the flesh. Consequently, the believer is then made clean. The condition is brought up to the position. The shedding of the blood symbolizes the price paid by Christ on the cross. Meaning that his death was a necessity in order for man to find victory over sin. So what God gave Abraham was a symbol of what Christ would do for us. For male organs. Come on. And he said you are buried, buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead. Now this one verse, we have the entirety of what it means to be in Christ. He said, buried with him in baptism. Now, does not refer to water baptism. Come on. But to the baptism into Christ, which actually refers to the baptism 
into his death. He was, he's not talking about being baptized in the water. When you are in Christ by faith, you are buried in Him. Come on. You are baptized into Him. And He said, where also you are risen with Him, does not refer to our future physical resurrection, but to that spiritual resurrection from a sinful state into a divine life. Come on. This was an answer to our faith in the operation of God who raised Christ from the dead. He said, through the faith proclaims the manner in which all of this is received. Come on. Notice that Paul said, the faith. The faith. Signifying the only type of faith which will God will recognize. Come on. He said of the position of God speaks of the energy in the working of God. Man's faith is inspired by the power that was available to raise Christ from the dead. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to shout. Amen. That same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us. Huh? I was buried with Him. When He went to the cross, I was with Him. When He went to the grave, the tomb, I was with Him. And when He was raised from the dead, I was raised with Him in the likeness of God. I'm in Him. Come on. And everything that Christ has, I got. Church. I'm buried with him. I rose with him. I'm alive today. He's alive and well. I've got a new life and it's in Christ. Amen. He said, Who hath raised him from the dead? For since Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection, which guarantees the coming resurrection of all saints, whether dead or alive. Hmm. And he said, you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh and be quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Paul now assures us that in Christ, there, here's a promise right here. We share the resurrection experience. In Christ's case, it was literally bodily resurrection from the dead. In our case, the death is spiritual, having been dead in trespasses and sins, and then and the being made alive is also scripture. Oh, come on. Amen. Yes. And eventually, church, we will experience a bodily resurrection. Amen. That's the next on our list. Huh? I got a list. I'm checking it. Yeah. Amen. And the next list is for him to come and change me. Yes. Come on. Into a bodily resurrection. That's next on my list. Come on, church. Amen. I'm looking for that day. He said in verse 14, plotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us pertains to what? The law of Moses. Which was God's standard of righteousness which man could not reach. Come on. We couldn't reach that. We couldn't reach the ordinance. We could not reach the, the law of Moses. We could not do that. Which was, the Bible which was contrary to us. The law is against us simply because we are unable to keep its precepts. No matter how hard you try, and I try, we can't keep it. The law is contrary to us simply because we cannot meet its demands. Still, it is not our enemy because it tells us the 
the truth. He said, then he took it away. Hallelujah. Refers to the penalty of the law being removed. And that penalty was Jesus Christ going to the cross and dying for you and me. His death so severe that it beggars description. He said he nailed it to this cross, which tells us in the manner which it was done. Come on. You couldn't keep the law. You couldn't keep the law. I couldn't keep the law. So Jesus came down. God came down. And He took it. That, that law that was contrary to us. It wasn't against us because it was the truth. Come on. And Jesus took it. Body get out. Oh, come on. The law is still there. He said, I did not come to do away from the law, but to fulfill the law. Yes. Huh? Yes. I don't get up every morning going, oh, I better, better do every ten commandments. Guess what? You've already failed because you lied. <laughs> huh? I don't get up every morning and go, well, here's a list. i got to watch what I'm doing. No, I'm in Christ. Right. My position stays the same. Huh? And I ask him to help me. Lead me, dear Lord. <coughs> and I, before I lay my head down, Lord, if there's anything that I may have said or done as contrary to you, forgive me. Forgive me. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. We, we forget who Jesus is and what he did for you and I. Yes. Amen. He said, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over the minute. Now, let me close here. Paul affirms that here that Christ has disarmed these forces of evil. When he did this, he did it in the face of who? The whole universe. If you and I will just place our trust in that which the Lord did, we will instantly know salvation and deliverance from all the powers of darkness. If we will maintain our faith in this which Jesus has done, understanding that it is the source of all that we have in the Lord, we can, church, walk in victory. With no sin whatsoever dom uh, dominating us, it is, it's in the cross. I said it's in the cross. It's in the cross. And that's where Jesus defeated and humiliated Satan. And that is where my victory and your victory were obtained. In the cross. Amen. He said triumphing over them in it. it. Means that not only were they wept. But as well, our Lord leads us as a victorious general leads his prisoners into a possession of victory. Amen. These forces, religious and heathen, thought they were putting Christ out of the way once and for all. But what really happened was that Christ put them out of the way. By his resurrection, he broke away and showed them, showed himself superior. Amen. 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 And by what he did, I have a new life in Christ. Amen. And it's all done by faith. Amen. Your position don't change. Come on. God's not moving you from room to room. Oh, you've been a bad boy this week. You've got to go to this room now. That's why a lot of people quit. Even my wife, Sister Angel, said one time, so that's why she gave, gave up going to church. Because she had already done fail God. Church, yes, I'm not staying, standing here and saying just go up and do whatever you want. No, 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 no. Shall we continue in sin? God forbid. Amen. But you got to understand, if you're saved tonight and your faith is in Jesus Christ, you got a position already. And that don't change. 
only way it can change, only one can pluck you out of God's head is you. Huh? I can't pluck you out of God's head, and nobody else can pluck you out of God's head but yourself. And but sadly, a lot of Christians today, amen, come on, take this the right way, this is the truth. If things aren't happening the way we want, we quit. We give up. Boy, if that's the, if that's the, the, the what happens, I would have been done a long time ago. Huh? But I've learned to just continue trusting the Lord. Put my trust in Him. If He promised, come on, His will, as I said this morning, don't end your prayer well if it's your will. Why did you pray it for then? It is God's will for you to be healed. Well, I guess God's just not going to heal me. You know, that kind of attitude you probably won't. Huh? Trust in Him. If you don't get your healing today, tomorrow's a new day. And guess what? If I don't make it tomorrow, I'm still going to get my healing. Because whether I stay or whether I go, I'm going to get a healing. Amen. Amen. If I die, no, go into heaven to be a vet, guess what? I won't have to worry about it. I won't have to worry about you laying hands on me no more. Huh? And I want you to understand tonight your faith is anchored in Jesus. Don't let the devil take your faith away from you. Because if he can get your faith away from you, he'll defeat you. Sadly, there's a lot of Christians not walking victoriously. Because we've been pulled to and fro, left to right. We don't know which way to turn. Turn to Jesus. Huh? Paul says, what you have been taught. Stay in there. Stay there. Huh? I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to give you any false doctrine. It's already came in the church. It's not here no more. Come on. Are you here? I don't go by the faith doctrine. My faith is in Jesus. My faith is not in the man. My faith is in the man, Jesus Christ. And I have a new life in Christ.